we are in the week two of 2025. I think now is the best time to learn about the DevOps tools for 2025. Now, this is only my opinion and what I use in my workflows and what I see is growing with respect to the community and I see the buzz around and I see the real value that it is providing. So starting off, what we'll try to understand is you all know that infinity graph. And in that infinity graph, the first piece from the producer of the code to the consumer of the code is writing the code and creating the image. Since we are in the cloud native and Kubernetes ecosystem, the thing that we produce is an image artifact. And when we write a Docker file, we use a base image. Now that base image needs to be secure. Now you can use any tooling, you can use Docker, you can use any tooling, but the base image and the resultant artifact, the resultant OCI artifact should be zero or minimum CVEs that you create. For that, there are some golden images, but I usually do not prefer the golden images, although they have set a standard because they become vendor dependent. So we created a tool called BuildSafe that helps you create those zero CVE base images with an extremely simplified developer experience. So that is the tool of my choice in 2025 for creating zero CVE base images. So BuildSafe is a tool for building zero CVE base images and that is what you should be using in 2025. Also, I want to emphasize one thing over here is the importance of a single package manager because when we talk about supply chain security we talk about as bombs uh, there is a tool called quark that you should be checking out in 2025 so like i also recommend to use a single package manager which in my opinion is nix because build save is also built on top of nix but you don't have to worry about that you just need to simply use build safe to create those zero cv base images and then use that as your developer and runtime environments in a multi-stage build all right now that you have built the application and it's cv free or less cves and you're maintaining the compliance and you know about the s bonds it's time to move to the way you deploy your application and where you deploy your application is via ci cd so you need to have some sort of pipeline and that's what the whole DevOps ecosystem is about, right? Creating those CI CD pipelines and then building the tooling and learning the tooling around that. So when I see CI CD, the current tooling that I'm using, there are two things that I want to mention over here. One is GitHub Action, the combination of GitHub Actions and Argo CD. But here I want to emphasize another tool, which is Dagger. Now Dagger is something very interesting and it lets you write your pipelines in programming languages like Go, TypeScript, Python. So you can run the local and you can run it locally or in the CI pipelines. And it has integrations with GitLab, with CircleCI and it has different SDKs of Go, TypeScript, Python and so on and so forth. So I think Dagger is something that you should be very heavily checking. Another tool that I want to highlight over here is Cargo. Uh, that helps the environment promotion of different type of artifacts like Helm, Customize and so on and so forth. So, but the ultimate thing that I will be using as combination in 2025 is still GitHub Actions and Argo CD for my CI CD and the GitOps pipe. Yes, there are other tooling, but for now, this is my choice for 2025. Let's move to policies. So policies, a very standard tooling that I always recommend is Caverno. Caverno I still will be using in 2025. For the validating part of thing, we can definitely consider the Kubernetes validating admission policy. Let's talk about building infrastructure. So building the infrastructure, managing the state, managing the configuration is something which has matured over the years. And there are a lot and lot of tooling that has evolved and it is great. So we had Terraform. A Terraform license changed, led to the creation of a project called Open Tofu. There are still the older tools which are widely used like Ansible. So all that is still there. And then we have very interesting tools like Crossplane that provides composition. And we have Chrome. We have Pulumi that lets you create your infrastructure by writing code. So all these tooling are available and these are the cloud native tools that interact with the cloud APIs, the infrastructure APIs to create the infrastructure that you need and maintain the state of that. So I think the tool that I will be using the most in 2025 and I recommend is again 
cross plane because cross plane has a very interesting concept called cross plane compositions. And I did a stream with Dan on the cross plane composition deep dive that you should check out. It has grown a lot since that particular live stream, but in order to get those fundamentals clear about the cross plane composition, I think that is something you should definitely check out. Coming to the package manager. So when you create the Kubernetes cluster, now you have the Kubernetes cluster, you have the CI CD pipeline, you have created the artifact, you're deploying to that. But what about the additional toolings that you install on the bare Kubernetes cluster, whether it's a managed provider or it's a self-managed Kubernetes cluster, which is hardly now you create unless it's on-prem. Uh, so there are tools like uh, Helm, very popular. Helm 4 is, you know, in works that you can check out customize Timony and OLM, which is, uh, which is not actually the open source part of it. Like some part of it is, but the UI is not. Uh, so it's part of like where the Kubernetes operators are distributed and then you can have the OLM for the updates and stuff like that. But a tool that I want to highlight for 2025 in this particular space is glass cube. So glass cube is able to seamlessly handle the dependency automatic CRD upgrades. This is a very critical component of custom resource definition updates and also the Kubernetes version compatibility testing because when you change the Kubernetes version and some of the operators, whether they'll work or not in the newer Kubernetes version, I think GlassQ plays a very important role. So that's what it compares to help. And also uh, if you compare it to customize, customize lacks like, you know, lifecycle management kind of things. And uh, whereas GlassCube offers the package updates uh, via the by the CLI, which is very intuitive. So I definitely think that GlassCube is a clear choice for me for 2025 for the Kubernetes package manager. Coming to WebAssembly, WebAssembly has been the talk of the town of 2024 and it will continue to grow in 2025 with more production ready applications. We have seen that as part of Wasm IO and Wasm Con talks, how it is used in industries as well. So in WebAssembly, some of the key things that I want to mention is PinQ project that you should check out in 2025 for building the applications and deploying that on Kubernetes clusters, the WebAssembly applications. Another project is Wasm Cloud. So those are the two things that I want to mention with respect to WebAssembly. Coming to the Kubernetes cost optimization. Kubernetes cost is very critical. And now the current challenge is not the adoption because there are cloud providers that are giving you the managed Kubernetes resources. But right now, one of the key things is how to reduce the cost. And for the cost, there are a lot of toolings which are available. There are like single dashboard. But I mean, I would like to mention two tools over here. One is cube cost. And one is Cast AI. So the cube cost was acquired by IBM and Cast AI has its intelligent auto scaling built in. So my tool recommendation for 2025 is Cast AI for Kubernetes cost optimization. While we are talking about the Kubernetes cost optimization, one more thing I would like to mention over here and highlight here is Kubernetes multi tenancy. So Kubernetes multi-cloud and multi-tenancy was mentioned in KubeCon North America keynote as well as one of the key technology areas. And right now, the only player that I see in the market, not because I work there, is B Cluster. The thing is, if you watch my live stream with Lucas in 2021, B Cluster was still something that I talked about. And I have always recommended B Cluster when it comes to multi-tenancy and Till now, in 2025, I still see that B cluster is dominating player for Kubernetes multi-tenancy and even helping that in cost reduction, sustainability, and all the other goals and playing a key role in platform engineering. So 2025, definitely check out B cluster. Why we just talked about platform engineering? Yes, it's the year where people have been talking a lot and building a lot of solutions for building IDPs, internal developer platforms. So one of the tools that has always been the first words that come out of the mouth when we talk about the internal developer platforms is backstage. But people are simplifying like how you actually create those IDPs built on top of backstage or, you know, simplifying the backstage experience by using, providing something. So there are different ones which are there, but I think for 2025, I would recommend you to check out port. So port is something that you should check out. Now coming to one of the key things when we talk about DevOps is the observability. 
Now, when we talk about observability, there are like three, four key areas. Like you have the monitoring, traces, logging, profiling. And for monitoring, you know, you have, when we talk about the cloud native ecosystem, we have Prometheus, we have Grafana for the visualization. For traces, you have Jaeger, then you have Fluent for logs or Grafana Loki. So there are different combinations of the open source tooling that you can use. Or there are very interesting paid tools like uh, Datadog and stuff. But two tools that I want to highlight over here that acts as a complete platform and are open source are Signos and Open Observe. So these two tools, definitely you should check out for 2025. But the tool that I will be using in 2025 is Signos. So make sure to check out Signos. Very good friends of mine. And it is the solution that you should check out for your observability needs in 2025. So go check out Signos for observability. Coming to security. So there are multiple aspects. We talked about some supply chain security. Yes, build safe is a tool that you should be using for generating S bombs, build time S bombs, and the zero CV artifacts. And it also helps you create those hermetic builds. But also you have uh, the scanning tools like Trini is still the choice for 2025. And Cubescape is the choice for me for 2025 for cluster hardening as well. And you know, the continuous compliance thing. And for the runtime security, I always recommend Falco. So now, if you see, if you have seen all the tools that I have talked about, so you created the zero CV base image using build save. You are using the CI CD pipeline using GitHub Actions and Argo CD. And then you have the policy engine, which is Kyverno. And you are using WebAssembly workloads, the applications created using Spin Cube. You have multi tenancy implemented using the cluster. You're optimizing the cost using cost AI. You are building the IDP using backstage or get port. You are observing the complete Kubernetes platform and the application monitoring using Signos. And you are using for security scanning and the compliance uh, scanning, Trivi and Cubescape. And for the package manager, you are using Glass Cube. And all of the infrastructure IAC is crossplay. So all these tools are my choice for 2025. But wait, wait, wait. One very key important thing left to talk about is AI. We cannot leave a video without talking about AI. So Kubernetes will play a very important role in 2025 to be a platform for running AI agents. So there are a couple of tools that I want to mention over here. One is for building agents, definitely. There is Crew AI that you can use for building the agents. Then there is Argo Workflows, Kubeflow, Kser, and even MLflow is really interesting in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Now, Kubernetes core concepts like the dynamic resource allocation is very important for 2025. So when we talk about AI, we, we need to think from the infra engineers from the cloud native perspective of how AI can be used as a platform for running those AI workloads. And in this, the tools that I would recommend for 2025 to be checked is Kubeflow, which is there for the complete from the machine learning training to the inferencing using KSERV and then using the individual components as and when you need like the notebooks, the pipelines and all that stuff. So Kubeflow is the one that we should be, that I will be diving into more in 2025. With that, I conclude the DevOps tooling for 2025, my choice of tools for 2025. I would love to know what tooling you are using for DevOps in 2025. So put that in the comment section and let us know which tools you are using in production for your DevOps lifecycle in 2025. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do tag all your favorite creators and thank them for creating such incredible open source tooling. A big thanks to CNCF for hosting all these incredible open source tooling and providing a hub for the innovation in the cloud native space. And with that, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, share all the usual stuff, which I forget always to mention. And see you soon. I'll be there in Postem and uh, at Coupon as well. See you soon over there. Thank you and bye.